come before the commissioners and, and uh, just bring you an update on, on what's going on there. And, uh, my second week there was a very busy week as well as the first there. But uh, anyway, this uh, why I am reporting here is to, to provide what we call transparency to the citizens of Stark County. And this is a public forum in which I can do that. And, uh, I believe we need to do that uh, to provide what's going on inside government to our, to our folks out here in the county. They're depending on us to do a lot of things for them with the money they give us, and it's important we get it right. And uh, this is one way we can take the temperature out there, too, to, to find out what their concerns are. Uh, I am getting a lot of uh, feedback from folks when I'm out and about. And, uh, you know, it's no secret, it is, it is uh, campaign season, so I, I am out and about talking to, to folks. And, uh, there is still a very large concern about how safe is the cash in the vault. Uh, I'm here to tell you, uh, this week, you'll see it in next week's report, we had a vault servicing uh, person come in who we had uh, take care of our vaults. Uh, we cleaned our, our time clocks on, on the vault door, uh, setting time on it now, which I didn't want to report last week that we were not. However, uh, when we count down our drawers at the end of the day, uh, I would venture to say we have less cash in uh, on this floor here than what you might find at a uh, convenience store, uh, some AM and uh, anywhere in the county. It's, it's uh, under two thousand dollars, so it's it's a very modest amount of money. However, we do have other important documents inside our vault, uh, and, and we felt that we need to keep those on a, a time release also, so they're uh, available during the night. Anyway, that's uh, beyond what my report covers here. Uh, last week I did talk with a representative from the Stark County Prosecutor's Office regarding uh, depository institutions. There are certain guidelines of uh, what we can do and, and what can be charged and, and how they can charge us for services a lot having to do with tax collection. So I'm making sure that we're not stubbing our toe on, on any of those statutes there. That's a fine read. Uh, it could be that we might need an interpretation from the, the state's attorney general's office on uh, a matter or two. But when I talk about, uh, and this is, this is for the folks here too, when I talk about using the Stark County Prosecutor's Office, immediately when somebody hears the word prosecutor, they think, well, there's a crime involved. Well, that's not the case here. We use them for general counsel, just as uh, a business person has their own general counsel to bounce things off of to make sure they're on track there. So there is no crime involved in, in us using the Star County Prosecutor's Office as a sounding board. And I do this for, for policies, too, and I'll, I'll get into that. Um, as you know and are aware, it's public record. We have contracted uh, in the past with the investment uh, advisory firm. Uh, they're located in Franklin County. They're an Ohio company. Uh, it's a two-year contract, and uh, there are certain matters that they handle for us, none of which they do not buy and broker uh, from themselves. So there's no incentive for them to, to buy investments from themselves because they're not brokers. So they go out and get prices on the, the investments when either we buy or sell investments. And there are certain things that happen in that transaction. So that's why I'm looking at the risk involved in those transactions too, to see what can fall between the cracks there. And take a very uh, uh, close look at it. Again, like I said earlier, we cannot afford for anything to happen. And we're already filling our budget crunch next year from things that uh, unfortunately happened in the past. But, uh, I reviewed the uh, services agreement, uh, received information about the, our portfolio positions, the investment strategies they are employing. Again, the top two priorities of our investment 
and our investment policy is uh, number one to be compliant with state and federal laws and what we can uh, invest in and number two the preservation of principle we're not chasing rates out there and sacrificing credit quality on the investments that's just not uh, permissible if it was it wouldn't be within our tolerance right now we cannot afford to lose uh, investment principle there, the rates aren't that favorable but you know, if it bites into the principal, then it, that, uh, that really hurts. I looked at their indemnification and professional liability insurances. Right now they're carrying, I believe it's uh, five million on the, uh, yeah. errors and omissions is five million and one million on crimes. There I have a call into the uh, agent of record of this policy to, to go more in depth with what this uh, policy actually covers and also to verify that it's a bona fide document a certificate of insurance so, uh, last week I, uh, the risk identification and mitigation process continued I signed a memorandum of guidance uh, gave it to all my cashiers instead including my head cashier had a training uh, meeting with each one of them there and basically on paper it tells them what my expectations are and how they handle the cash that they're responsible for and that's from when they receive it to when it uh, goes into the deposit bags and it's taken downstairs for deposit I did this in advance of a formal policy which is going to take time to, to uh, have a formal policy so this is uh, sort of a, a PCA letter in, in, in bank regulation, it's prompt corrective action sent out in advance of a, of a formal report. But this is prompt corrective action sent out in advance of, of my policy. I want to be sure they're doing what I need them to be doing now, not waiting until some policy. So it's, it's a common sense approach to uh, mitigating the risk in cash handling. And as I said before, when I'm out talking to folks, they're concerned about the cash here. So I want to make sure we don't stub our toe with the cash or we go back to zero on the peg as far as uh, uh, trust out in the community. Uh, I did put together a whistleblower policy. Now, before I took office, that was one thing I said we definitely need to have in place. That draft is up at the prosecutor's office uh, being reviewed. Uh, what a whistleblower policy would do is give a person who is uh, aware of or has a suspicion of illegal or uh, inappropriate activity within the treasurer's office and it's specific to the treasurer's office. I can't adopt something for other offices, of course. We need to have that out there so people are, you know, aware that they can uh, contact somebody, even over a supervisor, that it would not be looked on as uh, something that is uh, reprimandable, if that is a word. But I, I just made it a word, I guess. But, uh, uh, folks have to know who they can contact there, and I have a, a person in the prosecutor's office listed as a contact, as well as uh, me, if they are suspect. You know, suspicious of some activity going on. We can't let that happen again. We cannot let that happen again. Uh, the other uh, thing, uh, we are in meetings with Auditor Perez uh, staff and, and Auditor Perez. We have a, a big deadline coming up of the uh, real estate tax bills under a new system. And there again, it's important we get this right. We have folks working on this every day. It's a, it's a big task, along with the, the regular uh, chores that are going on there in the office. And I call them chores. It's, people understand that. I understand that. It's work. We're paid to do a job, and we need to do it. We need to do it well. And uh, the books are open. So that, that's my report to you.